Welcome to our talk on gut health and love your gut challenge, which will be starting here coming up in November. We're very excited to be offering some options and opportunities to help share with you lots of great things about a popular topic that's very important for us all, which we should become more and more familiar with what is going on inside our bodies. And that's what this is about. If you don't know me, I'm Amanda Villarreal. I'm nutrition consultant, personal trainer, have uh, been in the fitness and health industry for over 20 years. And I think that this is a topic that has been around for many years, but there's also a lot of confusion when we talk about what goes on inside our bodies. So when you see here some of the popular things such as acid reflux, we've all heard of them. We've heard of heartburn, we've heard of indigestion. But when we think about what is going on here with our digestive system, I'm actually gonna stop my video here real quick, guys, but I'll keep talking here. Uh, you have really two parts of your digestive system, the upper and the lower. And when we think of what goes on in the upper, we could actually spend probably our entire call talking about that, which our stomach, our esophagus, that's when we deal with more of the acid reflux, the heartburn. But then we get into the lower, and that's when we get into the intestines, the colon, the appendix, your stomach. And it's very, very alarming when we hear some of the statistics of what is going on today with digestive troubles and the fact that 20% of the population has irritable bowel disease. And I think that there's a lot to be said. It has a ton to do with our food choices and our ability that genetically things have changed. And we have to keep figuring out what we can do to help get our digestive systems to be working as optimally as possible. And also, if you look at the fact that women tend to have more issues with digestive troubles. The fact that some of the symptoms that we think are normal actually are not. We think of bloating, constipation, diarrhea. People think, oh yeah, that's just part of everyday living. And not necessarily. It could actually be a symptom that there's something bigger going on, that it's just starting, that you need to start to look at those symptoms because it could be alarming you for something later. And I hear people say sometimes, you know, hey, I, I have one or two bowel movements a week. I'm good. And that's not normal either. And that's what we want to keep trying to understand that if we're not having regular bowel movements, one or two times a week is not considered regular. It should be one or two times a day optimally. That all that fecal matter builds up in your colon and that creates toxin overloads in our body. And when that happens, other organs are going to be affected and you are going to notice continually that things are, are not going right and you need to pay attention. Symptoms are a very, very important thing. Now, this is a word that's very popular right now, microbiome. We are hearing this all over the place, and there's a reason we are, because there are so many studies that link microbiomes to so much that goes on inside of our body. We actually have over a hundred trillion microbes in our body, mostly in our gut. And you think about that, science has proven that they live in and around our body, and the thing that's very unique about these is genetics is something that we're born with, but microbiomes can be changed. So the microbiomes that live inside us are fed from our food. Uh, they can be altered or changed, which means that's very important because we can teach them to help boost our immune system. So the microbiome connection of what's going on inside our body is extremely important. We start to think about things like allergies. Uh, we start to realize it has things to do with helping our bodies to create a stronger immune system. And when we can do that, you're gonna notice so many things happen. Now, we used to be big on saying, you know, hey, when we're getting immune system troubles, we need to up that vitamin C, take the zinc, take the defend and resist, you know, things that we, we talk a lot about for helping from a vitamin and mineral standpoint. But it's very, very interesting that 70 to 80% of our immune system is in our gut. And so if we can hit that with things like probiotics, we are going to notice we have so much more than good bacteria and those microbiomes are going to continue to help create more and more good things in our body. So when you think of things like neurotransmitters, serotonin, you know, these things are key to helping us when we talk about brain function and moods and looking at some of the main nutrients that play a part in that, like vitamin K and biotin. But what happens is it also even affects 
weight loss, weight gain is a big one that if you don't have a good bacteria going on, it is amazing how when people start oftentimes the right probiotic, their bodies will start to lose weight. And it's because of the overgrowth of so much going on inside that we need to keep thinking about how as we get older, those microbiomes actually, they decline with age. So as they do that, that's why we have to look at how our diet is going to help with feeding and helping to incorporate positive microbiomes growing inside along with using probiotics to supplement in combination with that. So these are some of the things that we notice are symptoms of what goes on stemming from our gut. And I can guarantee if I asked anyone, you all know someone, if not ourselves, that could probably mark at least one thing on this screen that it's like, wow, I would never ever relate that to gut health. But even think about things if you've ever been on antibiotics, how that could affect long-term. Okay, this might even be, maybe you were not breastfed. Maybe you were born C-section. That can start way back then of what goes on for your immune system later in life. So it's never too late to change, but we want to be encompassing from our whole body perspective of what goes on and think about some of these factors that we now always have control over, but many times we do, and we need to start thinking about how we can continue to increase that fact that our guts need to be working properly. So we need to love our guts. How do we do that? We need to feed what's going on inside, not anything new to most of us. We know we need to be eating the right kinds of foods, and that's pretty self-explanatory, but do we do it? No. And here's a very, very common factor too that we don't get enough fiber. If you look at what the average American consumes in fiber, less than 5% of adults consume the recommended amounts of fruits and vegetables. 2% of kids consume the recommended fruits and vegetables. And what is found in those fruits and vegetables? Fiber. And the National Institute of Health recommends we should be getting 25 to 30 grams a day. And if we are not, what is going to be happening? We are damaging inside our body because the fiber is what helps to get things moving. So we need to make sure we are getting enough fiber in our diet to get toxins out and to promote regularity and keeping our colon healthy. So if you look at animals, as soon as they eat, they actually have a bowel movement. One thing goes in, one thing goes out. We are a little different. We're a lot more complex, but we should actually notice after we eat, our food should leave our bodies within 12 to 24 hours after eating. Now, if you eat a very high processed meat type diet, that is very difficult because there is no fiber in meat. So you have to think about how does your diet tend to, you know, steer towards, and that's where you need to figure out maybe ways that you can help supplement to help getting your body's nutrients it needs. And fiber is a big one. So we're gonna talk about some fiber sources here and I'm gonna mention you know, some bars and some things that are really good to help incorporate. But high fiber sources, if you eat an apple every day, that's three to four good grams of fiber. And again, you gotta get up to about 25. So do you really eat this many fruits and vegetables a day? It's something to be thinking about. And many times we do not. And this is, again, where the need for supplementation becomes very, very helpful. Remember, we don't want to keep trying to get to the point of where we are struggling with getting enough fiber. We need to plan ahead, and we need to avoid the things that are actually feeding the bad bacteria. What are we talking about? You guys all know, again, looking at this screen here, that, oh, yeah, I know I shouldn't be eating those things, but we do. And when we do, it inhibits our digestion, and there is absolutely no nutritional value in any of these things that you see on the screen. So this damages the insides. So again, if we're not replacing what we are losing by eating these types of foods, we are going to notice something is going to play a part in what's happening with our health. So very, very important that we're thinking about, again, what choices we're making from both, you know, what we're putting in our bodies. And then also when we look at two, medications, you know, things that also sometimes we don't even relate to that could be playing a part in what's going on. Uh, and then we get into, you know, we look at our food choices, but this is where we really know now because of all of the research and study that's been done, probiotics have been proven to help with building gut health. But here's the thing we need to note, not all probiotics are the same. So if you think, you know, you went to the store and you grabbed one and you thought, oh, it says on here, 
even though it was on the shelf, it needs to be refrigerated after I open it. And you look inside and you see that maybe it's, you know, liquid. Uh, do some research on that because you might be surprised. Liquids are going to be broken down in your stomach acid. It's not even going to make it to your intestinal tract. If you're taking something that is refrigerated, what if it wasn't refrigerated when it was shipped to that store? What if, you probably didn't have it refrigerated, you know, when it sat on your counter or so what happens to the live bacteria? It's no longer there. So we need to find a way that it's guaranteed to be live. And that's what is key to finding what we have with the Shackley probiotics or something that we have used for many years. And you'll, you'll notice there's a couple different types. Now, this is a brand new DI, which DI actually stands for digestion and immunity. So you're actually going to be hitting both targets of helping to improve using high quality microbiomes and bacteria. It's all cold pressed. And if you look at the different strains that are in here, you might see big numbers and you think, oh, that means great, 10 billion. Maybe you see one that says 50 billion. Bigger does not always mean better when it comes to supplements. You need to make sure that the right amount is in there to making sure that it's released at the right time. And I was actually very interesting. I was listening to a doctor speaking earlier, and he was talking about Lactobacillus raminus, which is one of the strains of bacteria that is in this DI. And there's two men that created and found the research on this. And that's why this Lactobacillus raminus is actually is GG is at the end. And that's because these two guys, Dr. Garbick and Dr. Goldwyn, they actually dissected from a bowel of a healthy human and found this strain of bacteria it is the most beneficial in infants and adults for live bacteria. So it's very, very interesting that even as, a, as an infant, that strain is guaranteed to not get disintegrated in stomach acid. So you're going to see survivability. That's very, very important that it's not getting deteriorated from the acid. So it's staying intact. And if you look at, again, what goes into a lot of probiotics, you'll see very common names because there's several that you see more of, which Again, there's lots of strains out there, but look for the research. Third-party clinical studies, they are here to prove that these strains actually work. So I really encourage you to look at how you can start to incorporate probiotics. Now, this is going to be the probiotic that was originally created, which is our pearl. The pearl is an amazing option also, especially if you're using this for kids because it's very, very easy to take and it's very small. Same thing, it survives stomach acid. It only has two strains, but they're different strains than what's in the other one. So for some of us that are starting this gut health challenge, I know there's a lot of us that might already be taking the Vitalizer, which we're going to talk about here in a little bit. So you would continue the Vitalizer, but you're also going to add the DI. Now, if you are brand new and you're just trying to figure out how to get started with gut health, we're going to encourage you to actually start with the DI and stick with that for the 30 days and see how your body does with that. Okay, there's no reason you can't use both, but starting out, a lot of times it can be very hard on your system if you struggle with a lot of digestive issues because so much good at one time can be hard to absorb also. So we need to make sure that we're giving you the right steps. So as I walk through some of this, I want you to know that whoever invited you to listen to this, you're going to want to make sure you talk with them to figure out the best program for you because we're going to share a lot of information here and different options. So when we look at something like Herblax, Again, you hear the word lax in the title, you think automatically laxative. This is actually 10% laxative and 90% detoxifier. So herb lax is an excellent one for somebody, again, that is trying to get things stimulated, especially if you deal with a lot of constipation. Herb lax is going to be extremely important for you. The main thing in it is sienna, which has been around for many, many years. Actually, this was Dr. Shackley, one of his originally products back in the 1920s. So it has been around for a very, very long time. But when you look at Herblax, it is so beneficial because it's going to help to stimulate your colon and get the bowels to move. And that's what you need to help, again, rid of toxins. We also have something called stomach soothing complex. So this would be one that if you're noticing you have a lot of the issues like we talked about, the acid reflux and a lot of digestive troubles after you eat. This is a great thing to have on hand that peppermint and ginger have also been used for many years, very natural. You can even make it into a tea, but it helps to calm our stomach. If we have a lot of inflammation going on, we need to have some simple options that we can use to help ease some of those symptoms. 
Now we use this oftentimes even, you know, for car sickness and, you know, motion sickness type things, but it is amazing how even during pregnancy, um, you know, we're talking about digestive health, but it, stomach being queasy and having that nauseous feeling is never fun. So know that there are natural options that are great to keep around. Easy Jest is going to be another one for digestion that we want to make sure we take note of. This is an excellent thing to take before you eat. I tell clients, if you are using this, keep it right on your table so you don't forget to take it before you eat your meal. You need to take it before because it's going to act as a way to help with getting the foods to be broken down. Because if you don't break down the food in your stomach, it creates more work for your intestines. And that is going to create a lot of the things that we start to see. You know, again, we talk about heartburn. Uh, they actually say that 90% of the population in their lives struggles with heartburn. Heartburn is very, very common. And why is that? Because your food doesn't get broken down, so it starts to come back up. So if you have something to help break it down naturally, which is what this plant-based five enzymes that are intact here do is to help break down the food. So it's a natural digestive aid. So again, there's lots of options and you kind of got to figure out where you're thinking, where are my main symptoms at? And we start to target what you should be taking from there. Now we also use a lot of our, our soy proteins and our plant-based options to help with giving a great way of little work and your digestive system because it's a drink. So you don't have to worry about as much action having to stimulate because it's already broken down into a liquefied formula. So when you look at something like this, the Life Shake, very balanced. Remember the fiber we talked about. There's six grams of fiber in this. That's incredible. For just one meal, you've already got six grams of fiber in there. So when you're looking for trying to stimulate better digestion, you need to make sure you're getting good nutrition. And that's where this comes into play because, again, we're all busy. We need quick options. So shakes are an excellent way to start to incorporate good solid nutrition. I mentioned fiber bars earlier that I was going to talk about, and this would be an excellent thing to keep in your car. If you know that fiber is, again, one of the things that you struggle with and you need more of it, eight grams of fiber. These taste great. They're apple cinnamon, so they are very chewy. Our kids love them too. And it's a great thing to, again, know that these are studied to have the right ingredients in there and the right types of fiber to help with improving digestion. We always want to start with a good basis of our nutrients. So whether we choose to just take the multivitamin, we choose to take something more extensive like this vitalizer, there's over 80 nutrients in this. We need to feed our bodies. So that's what we're doing here. So when we talk about that gut health challenge here very soon, we're going to give you some options and you know you can kind of choose which the best path for you. But two other optional products, I just want to make sure that I do highlight some of these characteristics of garlic is a big one. And why would we incorporate garlic into talking about gut health? And it is amazing of how much inside your gut that bad bacteria continues to build. And the allen that's found that's guaranteed live in our garlic complex, two tablets is equivalent to two cloves of garlic. That is what is so medicinal. It's nature's antibiotic and it helps to kill some of that good bad bacteria that may have built up, we're trying to replace the good and we're trying to kill the bad. So garlic can aid in that. So if you're someone that has had a lot of digestive issues, adding garlic, you might have to add it slowly. It's a great option to help with getting you to have that next step and furthering to make sure you're building that good stomach health and digestive health. Vitamin D3. I have to put this one in here too because I, I do think when you look at all the D options out there, there's a lot of them. D3 has been found to be the most absorbable and the best choice of a supplemented vitamin D. And the reason we're incorporating this with gut health is because it can help with thinking about healing and trying to help with getting the fact that vitamin D has been found to work on so many levels beyond just we thought originally was more bone health. Your immune system, everything that ties in inside, vitamin D can play a part in. And where a lot of us live, we don't have sunlight all the time. We don't always get out in it. So adding this can also be another part in helping your digestive system. And I just put a few notes on there that you might want to take more than one, you know, three to six a day. Generally at meals would be the best time and during daylight actually because that will help to optimize your vitamin D being synthesized. So here's a real quick overview. We have our probiotic, our prebiotic option. We did not really get a uh, time to talk too much on, but our prebiotic is also another thing that we would probably, if we're talking with you, you know, if you've taken probiotics and felt like they didn't help before, 
It could have been because they weren't actually getting absorbed. So a prebiotic is food for your probiotics. So they might be another step to add in there. Talked about our DI, our garlic, getting on a good basic foundation, whether it's Vitalizer, uh, just the basic multi, something to get you started along with Easy Just and Herb Lex. Again, are just the things we had talked about. So we are starting our 30-day challenge, and we would love to have as many people as we can participate. The great thing about this is we are not saying you have to be at a certain price point. You have to take these products. You have to take those. This is flexible. So we're going to give you options and variations according to your needs. So again, I want you to discuss with the person that referred you to this to work on the best plan for you. We're kind of giving you some different options of starting first with your multi and your protein. Remember, the protein is actually a meal replacement. You're going to add your boost, which we want everybody to be taking the Optiflora DI. So wherever you're starting, Optiflora DI is going to be the number one thing we need to incorporate, plus our boost. You could choose vitamin D3, garlic, maybe both, up to you. And it's totally customizable for your needs. If you're looking to be able to get in the most economic option, you could start with just the Vitaly and the Optiflora, and that's gonna cost you less than $50 for an entire month of taking those two things once a day to help getting you started on better digestive health. So we hope we found this helpful, and again, please contact the person that shared with this with you for more information.